Hello and welcome to the Aurora Public Schools Parent Webinar Series. In this video, we will be going over how to register a new student in Aurora Public Schools. Throughout the video, you will see QR codes to help you access certain websites. If you have a smartphone, you can open the camera app and point it to the QR code. Otherwise, you can type the link on the screen into your web browser. Remember, you can always pause and rewind the video if you need to go over information again. Before you begin the process, make sure you have the following documents ready to upload. A photo ID of the parent or guardian, the parent or guardian's proof of residence, which can be a lease, a mortgage agreement, a utility bill, including gas, electric, a home phone, can't use a cellular, um, water, trash, or cable bill. And the bill must show the parent or guardian's name and service address. You also need some student information, including birth certificate, or an I-94 form and immunization records. This is required by law. To learn more about required documents, you can scan the QR code on the screen or go to the website listed. When you have those documents or pictures of those documents ready, you can begin the registration process. First, go to the Aurora Public Schools parent registration website. You can do this by scanning the QR code on the screen or by going to the address listed on the screen. Once you're on the site, scroll down until you see the button labeled Register Online. Clicking this button will begin the process. Next, you're gonna enter your email address in the window that opens. Once you enter your email address, you will receive an email. Open that email and click the link at the bottom labeled Student Registration Login. first window will ask you to enter your physical address to verify it is in within the bounds of Aurora Public Schools. Box 1 is the street number. Box 2 is the prefix of the street, such as E for East. Box 3 is the street name. Box 4 is the type of street, such as Avenue. Box 5 is the apartment number, if applicable. Box 6 is the city. Box 7 is the state and box eight is the zip code. Once you have entered the correct information, click the verify address button at the bottom of the screen. The next page that opens will have several sections for you to complete. The first section is your household language. Choose your preferred language from the drop-down list. The next section is for your mailing address. You only need to fill the information in this section out if you receive mail at a different address than where you live. So skip this if the above address that you entered is where you also receive mail. If the address you entered before is the same, you can skip this section. Box one. Is indicate, it's to indicate that the address is a P.O. box. Box 2 is the street number. Box 3 is the street direction, such as East. Box 4 is the street name. Box 5 is the street type. Box 6 is the apartment number, if applicable. Box 7 is the city. Box 8 is the state. And box 9 is the zip code. The next section is for you to fill out information on parents or guardians that live at the address that you have listed. The first person's information you entered will be the emergency contact for the student. Boxes with a red asterisk or star next to them are required. So, on this list, box one is the legal last name of the parent or guardian. Box two is the legal first name of the parent or guardian. Box three is the legal middle name. Box four is the gender. And then box five is the parent or guardian's date of birth. Moving down, you must enter at least one phone number in boxes six through eight. 
So you can fill each of them out or you can enter one into one of the boxes. Box six is the home phone number. Box seven is a cell phone number. And box eight is a work phone number. In box nine, you will enter the email address of the parent or guardian. Box 10 is an alternative email. This is not required. And box 11 is the parent or guardian's employer and their address. Again, this is not a required field. Finally, box 12 and 13 are to indicate if this parent or guardian is in the military. Click box 12 if yes, and box 13 if no. In the next section, you will indicate your eligibility for special services based on your previous work experience. So the question reads, in the past 36 months, have you or another parent or guardian worked in any of the following areas for at least one day? So vegetables, fruits, seeds, including canning and packaging, uh, worked for a farm or a ranch, including dairy and sod, worked in a meat packing plant or a slaughterhouse, worked in a poultry or egg plant, worked in a greenhouse or nursery, a dairy farm, an orchard, a Christmas tree processing or a forestry, uh, a fishery, or done field work. If you have worked, you or another parent or guardian in the house has worked in that field for at least one day in the past 36 months, choose one, yes. If not, choose number two, no. For more information, you can call the number listed on the screen, 303-365-5817. In the next section, you can enter the information for another parent or guardian living in the household. At the bottom of the page, you must indicate if there are parents not living at the family address. If you choose yes, you will be able to enter information for that parent. If you choose no, you can continue on. When all parents and guardians that have live, that live or um, do not live in the household have been added, click the button labeled Save Parent Guardian Information. On the next page, you will enter the student's information. Boxes with a red asterisk or star are required. Box one is the student's legal last name. Box two is their first name. Box three is their middle name. Box four is their birth date. Box five is their gender. Box six is the grade. Box seven is the school year. Box eight is the name that the student goes by. This is not a required field. Um, this is only if you, uh, if the student goes by a different name than their legal first name. Box nine is the student's cell phone number. Again, this is not a required field. Box 10 is the country of birth. Box 11 asks if the student has ever attended school outside of the United States. Choose yes or no. And box 12 asks if the student has ever been enrolled in Aurora Public Schools before. Yes or no. In box 13, you can answer the last time the student attended Aurora Public Schools. Only answer this if you said yes to question 12. If you answered no on box 12, you will see several more questions pop up. You can skip box one. Box two asks what language your child used when they first learned to talk. Box three asks what language do you use when you speak to your child? Box four asks what language or languages your child understands when spoken to. Box five asks, what language does your child read or, or, and write? 
Box six asks if your student has ever been enrolled in any other US school. And then box seven asks, what language is best to communicate with your family in? In the next section, you will enter your race or student's race slash ethnicity information. You must select at least one option from part A and one option from part B. Part A asks, is the student Hispanic or Latino? No or yes. Part B asks, which of the following groups describe the student's race? Choose one or more. So the first box is American Indian or Alaskan Native. The second box is Asian. The third block box is Black or African American. The fourth box is Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. And the fifth box is White. In the next section, you will indicate if your student is a part of special programs. Question one, is your student currently receiving special needs services? If yes, describe in the box below. Question two, is your student currently enrolled in a gifted or talented program? If yes, describe below. And question three, is your student currently receiving additional services? Check all that apply and describe below. Next, you will answer some questions about your student's school history. Question one, if your child is in good standing with his or her previous school and would be able to return. So is your child in good standing with his or her previous school and would they be able to return? Yes or no. If you choose no, please explain in the box. If yes, or sorry, question two, has your child been expelled, placed on extended suspension, or asked to leave any other school in the past 12 months? Yes or no? If yes, check the boxes to indicate expelled, extended suspension, or asked to leave, and the start and end dates. Question four, has your child ever had a threat assessment completed by another school? Yes or no? If yes, Please list the name of the school and the date of the threat assessment in the boxes below. Question five, has your child ever been placed on any type of safety plan? Yes or no? If yes, please list the name of the school that completed the plan and the date it was completed in the boxes below. Question six, is your student currently on a safety plan? Yes or no? In the next part, you will complete family relationships. For each parent or guardian you entered earlier, click the drop down menu to indicate their relationship with the student. Now you can list other emergency contacts who will be allowed to pick up the student if you cannot be reached. These contacts are different from the people you entered earlier. You can enter up to three emergency contacts in these fields. Once you have entered their information, click the checkbox to indicate that you have read and agreed to the following statement. By not providing a phone number or email address for an emergency contact, the district will not be able to make contact with this person. Next, you will enter some questions about the student's residency. Question one asks if the student is an unaccompanied youth as in not in the physical custody of the parent or legal guardian. Choose yes or no. Question number two asks about the student's present housing situation. Check all of the boxes that apply. If none of the scenarios in those boxes apply, check the last box. When all of the information is entered, you can click the button at the bottom labeled continue to release forms. 
The first release for you, the first release that you will see is the media release form. This form gives Aurora Public Schools the ability to feature images of your student in print or electronic publications. Choose one to give permission, choose two to deny permission. Please note, this media release does not apply to public events that occur on or off Aurora Public Schools property. During public events, students may be included in photographs, video recordings, and or interviews by Aurora Public Schools or media outlets. The next release is to acknowledge that Aurora Public Schools can release records of your child's testing accommodations to assessment agencies. Click the checkbox to acknowledge and consent. Below that is the acknowledgement of the Code of Conduct, which outlines district policies for teachers, students, and other school personnel and visitors. You can read the Code of Conduct by using the QR code on the screen.